um, another hat here. Let me adjust this just a tad bit. There we go. Um, this hat here, it kind of has a little bit of a sentimental value to it. I bought it from Kmart. But the first day that I wore this to work, uh, I was sitting outside in the smoking area. Yes, I do smoke. Hey. But <clears throat> my boss lady, which she didn't know at the time anything about me, um, she, she said she liked my hat and she wouldn't know where I got it from. You know, I told her from Kmart. And I went to my supervisor that I had told about me transitioning. And I asked him um, if he thought that it would be okay for me to um, tell her because I don't know, just she made me feel comfortable around her. So, but he said that was up to me, and he really felt that she would be very acceptive of the whole thing. So I did that day. I went to her office and asked her you know, if I could talk to her privately. And she's like, yeah, you know. And the first thing she said that was, um, she was hoping that I wasn't offended by her asking me about my hat because, you know, there was other people standing around when she done it. But I, I told her, you know, that it didn't offend me at all. It was actually, it made me feel pretty great that oh, another woman asked me, you know, about something I, I was wearing. And um, anyway, um, I, I told her that I wanted to tell her something, and I asked her if she knew about, you know, the rumors that was going around about me that was spread by the other person. And she said she had heard them, and and I, I told her, you know, I said that's, it doesn't make sense to me why the person, you know, lied, because to me, the me telling that person that I was transitioning from male to female was way more interesting than the other. So anyway, I told her that I wanted to tell her something, and, and she told me that I could say whatever I wanted to, and it would be confidential. You know, she wouldn't say anything to anyone else. And I, I told her that I, yes, I'm, I told her I was transitioning from male to female, and, and, and she got a look on her face, and she wanted to know a lot. She wanted to know about you know my feelings and um, if I felt happier making this decision and that's a big yes yes it's a big yes um, <clears throat> so I I told her that um, that I, I planned on you know being more open and at work but I um, she, she told me without me asking her that about the policies at work and about um, no discrimination you know against anybody you know gay lesbian transsexual um, she said that I mean not on, on my side where I work at but on the other side where the plan is that there's you know gays and lesbians over there and they don't tolerate people doing anything or saying anything to any of us about anything so um that was a big plus to me you know um i i was working at a place where i could be myself anyway and i was glad that i told her and so and now whenever she comes outside smoke cigarette <laughs> you know um we we talk a lot more it's like a barrier is down. She knows that there's, you know, it's not like she's talking to a man. She knows she's talking to another woman. And it seems, you know, she treats me as such, too. Um, she doesn't say much of nothing around me whenever men are around, but, but she, when no one's around, it's just me and her. She talks to me about things. But this is one hat that I, I picked out that I just had to have it. You know, it's just cute. And anyway, that was my little, my, my story about about the hat. 
you know. Um, this, I mean, if, if you could really dislike, tolerate all the little, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm going to be repeating myself because I'm jumping in between events since it's all took so long. So kind of just bear with me if I repeat myself, you know, and I'll tell you the, all the little things that took place. This was like way later. Um, what I was just talking about was way later, and I, I kind of want to back up a little bit and go back to um, like just right before my laptop got smashed by my life. At at that point, I really didn't have any girl clothes whatsoever, and my wife, I mean, other than the the stuff that she tried to throw away, that was all that I had. But when she left, um, <coughs> just so happens, it was like two blocks over, there's a, a Salvation Army there. And I went to the Salvation Army and started going through all the clothes and stuff. And I found pants, um, blue jeans. Um, it was kind of like experimental stage of what what do you like you know I don't I never really thought about what do I like you know um, I really had no idea as to what looks good with what or anything like that and so I, I kind of just bought a whole bunch of stuff and I didn't know what size bras fit or paintings or anything like that so I, it's like I had to just get a bunch of stuff and try it all on and, and what fit fit and what don't, I guess, throw it away. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's what I did. I bought a bunch of stuff and just tried everything on and find what fits me the best. And so uh, that's how I started out. Um, Salvation Army, it's because you can buy tons of stuff. And figure out what looks best and color wise um, I think browns look the best on me and yellows with the browns it's got to be mixed um, I, I just it's, it's been real exciting but during that time frame that I was getting the clothes and stuff um, one thing I kind of failed to mention was the fact that when my wife skipped out on me she was actually collecting and saving the rent and all the different bills that she was supposed to be paying she kind of was saving the money to leave on so it kind of left me in a hole <laughs> so I kind of had to uh, I was kind of forking over whole paychecks <coughs> to our landlord to kind of pay the rent to get it caught back up and the uh, electric got shut off, the water got shut off, and I sat for like a whole month without no power or water. And, but I mean, I made it through all that. Uh, the, the landlady actually helped me. Um, she got me into another place that she owns that's cheaper in rent, and she set me up to where I could pay. Um, like fifty dollars extra a month just to pay off the back rent and that was really good and she also gave me a discount on the rent um, I mowed the entire property and she would knock like fifty dollars off of it that was really awesome too <coughs> but at all of this time she was gone and the kids were up in Indiana staying with their mom um, after I moved into the new place, it was about a week later, she came back and she had the kids with her and um, I told her that the kids could stay with me but she couldn't stay with me. So she went and stayed at the friend's house and kind of moved from her friend's house and she had a boyfriend and she would go visit with him and then go back to her friend's house back and forth like this for a little while and then uh, she came up with the idea that she could uh, come back into my house, you know, because we were still married. And that was kind of, I didn't know what to do kind of thing because 
legally I couldn't just throw her out and I had no grounds to get her out of the house and I, I tried to explain to people that she didn't even live there you know when I moved there that she was living somewhere else and they said it didn't matter because we were still married so I mean it was just a big complicated mess because I, I just I didn't want the relationship anymore because she I mean, just too much stuff happened. So, but anyway, I'm, I'll probably expound on that a little deeper in a different video. But, um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys.